All right, let's get started. Welcome back. Now that you are experts on collaborative filtering, in addition to already being experts on clickstream mining, not to mention all the algorithms that get used for these things, it's time to, to become experts as well on spam filtering. Right? And after that, you can name your price and get a job working for anybody because the demand is high and the supply is low. Okay, anyway, in the meantime, uh, here's what we're going to do today. Two things. First of all, uh, we're going to finish talking about vision learning. And in particular, we're going to do the thing that we didn't do last time, which is to uh, talk about how to learn vision networks. Very uh, interesting and large subject in its own right that you know, we won't have a lot of time for, but we're going to cover that. And in particular, we're going to talk about one of the most important algorithms in the, in the class, which is the EM algorithm. EM is not just used for learning vision networks, it's used for learning a lot of things. We, we will introduce it here, applicable vision networks. Uh, we will see it again much later in the class when we talk about unsupervised learning and clustering. And, we will, and there we will see that it's also used for clustering. So a very good algorithm to know about. And you can probably come up with new applications of it uh, yourself. But then the, 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 the bulk of the class is going to be one of the funnest topics in, in, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in machine learning, which is neural networks. So we're going we're gonna to start talking about neural networks today. Uh, we'll probably only fi finish um, next week, but, but as you'll see, it's a, it's a very interesting topic. And as usual, please feel free to ask questions at any time. So let's start by briefly reviewing what a vision network is. Right? A vision network has nodes that represent what? Variables, right? And it has edges that represent what? What does it mean to have an edge between two variables in a vision network? The one that influences the other. Exactly. One directly influences the other, right? And in particular, the edges are directed. So having, for example, in, in, in this example here, campfire has an edge to forest fire, because that means that my distribution for forest fire is expressed as a function of its parents, campfire and lightning and storm. Okay? So the graph of the network tells me what the independent structure is, right? And then the for remember, the formal notion is that each node is conditionally independent of its non descendants given its parents. And last time we saw the reason for each part of this definition, right? It's a bit of a mouthful, but, but it makes sense. So the, the, the graph tells us who depends directly on whom. And then the other thing that we have is at each node, we have a table that tells us what the probability of that node is conditioned on its parents. So for example, here, you know, the probability that, that we have a campfire, given that there's, say, a, a storm and no bus tour group is 0.1, which makes sense, right? Because if there's no tour group, there's probably no campfire, right? There could be somebody wandering through the woods without a group, and they could have laid a campfire, but that's less likely, okay? So this is what a vision network is. And remember, a vision network is actually a more powerful thing than most of the stuff that we saw before, like rule sets and, and uh, uh, decision trees and you know, nearest neighbor and whatnot. Because those algorithms, all that they gave us at the end of the day was a way to make the prediction of one value. You know, is this a good credit risk or a bad credit risk? Does this patient have diabetes or not and so forth? A vision network actually allows you to predict any subset of variables given any others. It's a much more flexible thing. I, I can look at this, it's like having an exponential number of classifiers all baked into one representation. Very handy thing to have. So for example, in this vision network here, right, you could predict campfires as a function of storm and lightning, or as a function of storm and bus two group, or predict anything else as a function of anything else. In particular, you, can, you don't have to know all the other variables to predict one. So for example, if I want to predict forest fire, and I know lightning and campfire, right, then I actually don't need to know anything else, right, which is good, right? Uh, but if I happen to, for example, not know campfire, then I can use instead storm and bus two loop. Because they tell me about campfire, and therefore indirectly they tell me about forest fire, okay? So this is very nice, this is very powerful, it's a very flexible representation, it's also very compact, as long as each node doesn't have too many parents, right? This is the key thing. I can have a vision network over a lot of variables, it remains compact as long as each variable only has a small number of parents. If one variable has a lot of parents, then we run into trouble and we need to do something else. Okay? Now with this power comes the problem that we now have this problem of doing inference in vision networks, right? How do we do this computation of the probability of some subset of the variables given another subset and maybe ignoring the rest of them? And we briefly mentioned this last time, 